Hi, everyone. I'm very excited to be here. It's been a dream of mine to speak at React Next for a, a few years. Uh, thank you very much for joining this session. My name is Karen Kenzi. I'm a senior software engineer at AppSwire. I love to volunteer in different initiatives and organize meetups. And in my not so spare time, I study psychology. So today, we're going to talk about forms. As a front-end developer, we are often required to implement some sort of forms, right? It's either a form or a graph or dashboard, etc. And managing the form and implementing it ourselves can be really complicated. We can have several steps. We can have different kinds of inputs, for example, email, phone, etc. At AppSwire, I had to implement a dropdown and upload CSV files, send it to the server for validation. And it's really messy to handle all this ourselves, to manage the state, the error, the is valid, is dirty, etc. So why do it ourselves when we have such a great libraries out there? One of them is React Hook Form. And today I'm going to show you through a live demo how you can hook your forms with React hook forms. And I will show you some basic and main uh, method that we can use in order to do that. So they say a picture is worth 1,000 words. So how much is a live demo worth? Let's see. <laughs> so hopefully, uh, let me know if you can see this. Or uh, does anybody want to increase the font size? Or it's OK? OK? Increase? OK, so basically here I've prepared in advance uh, a simple form kind of the hello world of form. You can see here last name and first name. And when I click, currently when I click on the form, nothing happens, right? Because I haven't done anything yet. I haven't handled the on submit methods. I haven't registered my form to anything or implemented, implemented it uh, myself. So uh, the first thing we need to do in order to use React hook form is Basically, of course, install it using Yarn or NPM, whatever is your favorite. And we to, uh, I've already installed it in advance. And the main custom hook of React hook form is use form. So let's use it. It will return us several uh, methods. I will just show you that. And let's use form now. If I will show you uh, a log of methods just to see what it returns, you will be able to see all the methods. Sorry about that. Let's refresh our page. And we can see here that we get clear errors, control. We get the form state, which include error, dirty field, is valid, etc. We also have a method to getting the form uh, values, a register function, and more. We can use all of that in order to uh, manage the form as we want. And let's do some basic uh, registration. So in order to uh, include the input fields in our form, in our validation, we need to register the input. So let's just distract the methods and use Sorry, it's a live demo. It's, uh, I'm excited. Let's use the register method. In order to register our input, we can remove that. We don't need it anymore. And in order to register the input field of the first name, what we need to do is use the register method and supply it with the input name. And that's the way we, uh, we use the spread operator in order to uh, inject all the props we receive by calling register, which is on change, on blur. We also, uh, it also provides the reference for the input. And uh, it also provides the name of the input. So let's do the same for last name. Sorry. Not all of this, but just that. So. And now let's use another method we get from uh, use form, which is um, handle submit. We will call it on submit and provide it with a callback that will be called if our uh, input fields are valid. So the, it received data. And for now, let's just console log 
sorry, the data we receive from the uh, form. Okay, sorry for that. Now let's refresh our page. Hopefully it will work. We can see here the data that's been collected from the form. I haven't entered any uh, input field yet, so it's empty, obviously. And now I will want to show you how to do the validation. So if we are using React or form, there are two ways we can use in order to validate the input field. One, if you're used to working with forming and external uh, library, such as Yoop, uh, you can provide the schema. I've already created uh, an example of a schema. You can see here that the first name and last name are required, and the first name needs to be at least two characters. And what we need to do for that, to use the schema, if you're used to using a schema, is to install hook resolver and use uh, the yoop resolver. So let's do that. As before, I already pre-installed it to save us some time. And let's import yoop resolver from hook firm resolver yoop. And provide it to the uh, use form as uh, one of the optional argument. So let's say resolver, and let's set it to cube uh, resolver and provide it with a schema I showed you before. And we need to, uh, in order to show you that it actually validates the form and the input, I will also register subscribe to the error object, which is included in the form state. So let's use form state and get for it the error. And Let's console log the errors so you will be able uh, to see them. Errors. Uh. OK. So hopefully it will work, but I'm not sure. It's a live demo after all. So you can see here, hopefully, let me increase it. No, it doesn't increase anymore. So we can see here that we have two errors. One is the first name, the other is the last name. And we can see that the validation works with schema. Another way to validate our string is basically use the built-in HTML validation uh, by using the register and providing uh, with an uh, optional argument. So let's remove the resolver. We don't need it anymore. We want to use the more intuitive way of uh, specifying the validation rules, and we need to provide it as a second argument. For example, let's say that the first name is required equals true. And now if I will refresh the page and submit the form, I will see an error, just as in the first name, as I only uh, add the requirements to the first name. We can also use the error object to print the error message to the user. We can do that by accessing the error object. Oh, sorry. First name. If we have any errors, let's print them to the user. We will use the message. Now, Currently, we saw that the message is empty, but we can supply, instead of saying required equals true, true, we can also specify the error message we want to display to the user. For example, this is a must or required, whatever you choose to uh, display to the user. And if I will refresh the form, I will be able to see the errors over here. So it's really simple, really intuitive way to validate our form. Now, uh, what if I want to supply default arguments, default values to the form, and not just leave it as empty? We can do that by providing default value, providing additional uh, optional argument called default value, and specify uh, the default value for first name. Let's say uh, Nadir, for example. And let's say the last name is Ackerman, just at the top of my head. with an A. And once we refresh the form, we can see here, uh, I think I have last, right, last name. We can see that the inputs are being filled with the default values I provided. 
Okay, so one other method that we can use is the recent, but, uh, the recent method. Many times we need to reset all the fields, maybe uh, some specific inputs, maybe all of the inputs. So we can use a dish, a dish uh, sorry, <laughs> excited. We can use another method, which is returned from the use form, which is reset. So let's add a, a button for reset. What we want to do here, button, and reset, a lot of typos. Uh, on click, let's call reset. And the reset will set the value based on the default value I provided. Let's refresh it. Let's say I set it to something different. And now I, I will click on restart, and we can see that the input gets back to the default value. Now, React to forms include several uh, custom hooks that we can use. One of them is used in order to pass the uh, use form methods into a nested component instead of passing it via props. Uh, so what we need to do in order to use the form, uh, in order to pass to the nested component all the methods from the use form is basically wrap our form with from provider. Let's use it as well, from provider. Let's wrap our form with, OK. Let's wrap it. And sorry. Now, if we will add additional component, let's say, for example, a child component. Sorry. Well, let's add the Tesla component, for example. <coughs> mm -hmm. It's a live demo. Hmm? That's OK. So now, when we go to the Tesla component, we can use a different custom hook, which is use form context. Const, and let's say we want to use the register. And in order to do that, we need also to provide the form provider with the methods we just got from use form. And now, if I go to the Tesla component and I want to register the Tesla account, I can, do, uh, I can use the register, even though I haven't provided it directly to the component with uh, props. So let's use the register. Oh, sorry. Ah, I'm just checking if you are uh, <laughs> listening. Hmm? Ah, OK, OK, OK. <laughs> Provider. Good catch. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. OK, so now when I click on Submit, I can see that the data also includes the Tesla account. Now, you can see here that the Tesla account is sent as a string. Um, if I want to pass it to the server as a number, there is additional optional argument that I can add to the register function, which is value as number, and set it to true. And now when uh, the candidate will ask for two Tesla, we can see that the uh, sorry, value is number. Let's refresh it. And now when I click on 2, the submission is not. Ah, of course, live demo. Why should it work? Hmm? Ah, oh, sorry. Ah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Uh, I was so excited to speak, so I, uh, I haven't slept, really. 
<laughs> Sorry for that. Um, okay, so let's go to the Tesla, the right component this time, and do values number equals true, and let's see if it will work now. And we can see here that is it sent to actually as a number. Um, so those are the basic methods we need to use in order to register our form. Uh, you can see it's very intuitive, very easy if you don't make any typos, right? <laughs> so um, hopefully uh, that next time you get to implement some sort of form, you will consider using the React hook form. It is very powerful. It is great on performance. You have great developer experience. If you take a look at the bundle size, it's really small. It has no dependencies. And it does less re-renders and allows you to isolate the re-renders to the uh, component that you want and not do all the re-renders at the root level. If we, oh, too much. <laughs> if we look at the uh, NPM trends from the past years, we can see that uh, React form is gaining a lot of popularity. And I'm not sure uh, what happened here. Maybe people. Uh, whether well, busy celebrating Christmas, New Year, etc., because there is a drop over here. <laughs> so um, if we take a look at the statistic, we can see that Formic is the, uh, the leading library for, uh, for managing forms. And second is the React hook form. It's really well maintained. It's an, as only seven open issue. Uh, it is frequently updated. Uh, it's really, uh, the bundle size is really small, and it's very easy to use. So thank you for, very much for attending this session. I hope you enjoyed it, and have a nice evening.